going on, MMA fans? I'm back to do my MMA Corner number 12 video. My apologies for this being so uh, late. School, um, a whole bunch of stuff going on right now. Um, if that happens and you don't see a video pop up, that's what's going on. School's picking back up for me for the fall. So I'm trying to, you know, time management, try to do everything um, based upon what's going on. But let's get into some of the topics that were sent to me. Three that were uh, really, really good topics. Um, if I haven't gotten to your topic on this MMA corner, I promise it'll be on the next one. Uh, first topic that was sent to me was from John True. Wanted me to talk about um, now that the BJ Penn GSP2 fight has been rumored to happen. Um, a lot of people on MMA forums have talked about BJ Penn being robbed in the first fight. And um, John True wanted me to go and, and look at the fight unbiasedly and um, use the MMA scoring system based upon the 10 point must system and who did I think uh, won. Um, today is Wednesday. When this video is going to be popped, uh, put up, it's actually going to be Thursday, which is tomorrow. But um, Monday I watched this fight and I actually went and scored it. And I will show you real quick. I made some notes on a sticky note right here. And I um, scored the fight. Round one, I gave the pen 10 9. Rounds two and three, I gave to St. Pierre. Now, really, if you go, and, and I'm going to get the link. Um, and put it up over on this side for the fight metric, which I use a lot in order to show what ha has happened in a fight. St. Pierre combined with leg kicks and combinations thrown with his hands outstruck BJ Penn in the fight. Um, and that's something that even with the Forrest Griffin Rampage Jackson fight was a huge controversy. Um, you have to remember in mixed martial arts, everything is utilized. Legs, hands, all of it. Um, BJ Penn did the most damage in the first round and definitely won that round, at least in my opinion. Um, rounds two and three, St. Pierre had takedowns, St. Pierre had good combinations, had good leg kicks. Um, I think had some of the exchanges better the combinations, um, and that's what won him rounds two and three. He had two takedowns in round two, and he had a solid takedown in round three to solidify that round. So I, I think to sit there and say that BJ Penn got robbed when you take those factors in and um, the fact that St. Pierre outstruck BJ in the fight, I really don't necessarily see that BJ was robbed. Um, I think if you go back and you watch, watch the fight unbiasedly, take both guys out, whether you're a St. Pierre fan or a Penn fan, and in my case I'm both a Penn and a St. Pierre fan, um, that's the conclusion you come to using the scoring system. So. Um, like I said, uh, I don't think BJ got robbed. Do I think it was a close fight? Yes. But I think, based upon the things that I mentioned, I think that's why St. Pierre got the, the look. That's why St. Pierre won the fight. Um, thanks for the topic. Uh, Cheese2889 wanted me to talk about um, uh, Arlovsky Barnett break that fight down and. Um, Bobby Ortiz. Now, what I will say is these both both going to be great fights if they happen. Arlovsky Barnett is going to happen. Uh, Tito Ortiz Bobby is not happening yet because Tito has not signed with um, Affliction as of this point. Um, so I'll get to those topics when I do my predictions video. But um, is Tito Ortiz truly past his time? Tito, at this point in his career it seems cannot hang with the upper echelon of 205, probably anywhere. Um, that's not saying that Tito Ortiz is not still a good fighter, but Tito is more of a show, and, and I I don't want to come off as wrong about Tito because Tito has done great things. Tito has helped build a sport of MMA. There's nothing wrong with that. But I think Tito's heart is not in the same place that it was earlier in his career. I think he fought maybe not the top guys at that time, um, with the exception of maybe a guy like Evan Tanner beating Tanner in the fashion that he did. Um, you know, there were a couple guys that people still to this day go, "Why did Tito fight him?" You know, and you can argue it all day, but I think Tito at this point of his career is not the same Tito Ortiz of the past. And I'm not trying to quote Dana White and say exactly what Dana has said, but you can see it, and that's why he's not beating the upper echelon of um, 205. That's why even Rashad Evans was a tough fight for him. And Rashad is not a top, you know, 205 fighter uh, in the world. And he could 
barely hanging with Rashad. So, I mean, that, that's what I'm saying. It's I think Tito is past where he really needs to be. Could he be still a good fighter? Possibly. We'll see what happens uh, here in the future. Thanks for the topic. Texans10 wanted me to talk about... Um, why does the UFC feed Ultimate Fighter winners lesser fights? Um, and do they feed them lesser fights? Um, and, and why don't you see, you know, um, these guys fight top competition? Um, an example of that would be what he gave me was Joe Lozon fought Kenny Florian and Nate Diaz won the show. Um... Because they want to market certain fighters. This goes back to my UFC fighter salaries video. If you've watched that, check that out. I pretty much explained this. But um, the UFC is a business. And they're going to market certain fighters to the casual fan base. And people that don't know anything about MMA will watch a fight and go, Wow, he did great. Even though it might have been not the best opponent in the world. So they market certain fighters. And they put certain fights on for certain fighters to make them look good, and that's why you see that. Is it right? No. Do I agree with it? No. But once again, the UFC is a business, so uh, thanks for the topic. Um, thanks, guys, all three of you, for the topics that uh, you sent me. As always, uh, leave me some comments, construct a negative positive, let me know what you think, leave me some ideas for my next MMA Corner video, and on that note, you guys, have a great day.